reviewing these headsets was a mess. I've been checking out the Pico 4 for the past week. This is their newest VR headset that's competing with MetaQuest 2. But this is the first time they released a headset in the West for consumers with the backing of TikTok's Mama by Dance. And there's a lot to like about the headset, but there was a lot of confusion too that we need to talk about before you buy. Thanks to Pico for giving me an early access review unit and now join me beyond reality. The Pico 4 launched this month in October, starting in Europe and some Asian countries from 429 euros. There are no plans for a US launch just yet. Pico has been making VR headsets for years, but they've been focused on business. Only in China they had consumer editions. Until last year, the company was acquired by TikTok owner ByteDance, so I guess they've been throwing a lot of money at this. Their marketing completely changed. Not sure if it was for the better, which I'll explain in a bit, but the hardware is slick. Next to the headset you get in the box two controllers including batteries and lanyards, glasses spacer, nose pad, USB-C power adapter with USB-C to USB-C 2.0 data cable and user guides and safety warranties. The Pico 4 is the first from a major company with pancake lenses which allows for this little form factor that feels light on the head. Having tried it for a longer time, I think it's one of the most comfortable headsets so far as it's perfectly balanced. I'm a fan of the rear battery design and an elite-like head strap out of the box. Comfort is very personal, so don't judge the headset on this part too much, but I have to say it's not revolutionary yet. It's still not easy to drink my coffee with the headset on, and I'm not a big fan of the foam. The material doesn't feel nice on my face and is stiff when you put on the headset initially. After a while, it starts to conform to your face shape and it's a bit better, but I still want to switch it. Thankfully it's magnetically attached so I'm sure there will be third-party foams available. The strap however is not replaceable as there are cables in it for the battery and the integrated speakers. You can remove the top strap and replace that but you're out of luck if the strap isn't for your head. But to my surprise laying down with this was comfortable because of this uh, back cushion I guess. It's still roomy enough for these kinds of glasses but if you need a bit more space you can use the provided uh, glasses spacer but I recommend waiting for some third-party lens adapters to not scratch the lenses. Now before we jump into the specs and performance let me set it up. Right after putting on the headset you are immediately inside Pico OS. There's no need for a mobile app although it exists and you don't need a TikTok account. <laughs> Only a couple of prompts and disclaimers show you how to use the controllers, connect to Wi-Fi, blah blah blah. It will then show you how to create your boundary which is that virtual wall so you can tell where your furniture or walls are in VR. You can pick from an easy circle or draw your own walls around you. And that's all you need to get gaming. It's a breath of fresh air. It's powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon XR2 together with 8 gigs of RAM, 4K resolution with 1200 pixels per inch on two LCDs and it offers excellent visual clarity. The headset has a new IPD adjustment that not many headsets have. In the software you can set your IPD. The lens will then automatically move to match your eyes. I want this on every headset. Pico says it has a range of 62 to 72 millimeter, but to my surprise, you can actually ignore this warning by clicking on the checkbox and it can go even lower to 58 59. Be careful though, cause it may squeeze your nose. Ouch. My IPD is 60 and with my tiny nose, it was perfect. Now we were promised a field of view of 105 degrees, which is usually far off from what I see, but now it's actually close. This is what I measured and the FOV is slightly improved over the Pico 3 and Quest 2. Unfortunately, you won't notice the upgrade much if you don't directly look at the two headsets right after each other. But the high resolution display and the pancake lenses make up for a lot. The overall colors are pleasing, the sweet spot is large and you don't see God rays often anymore. Everything looks so damn sharp, especially in good 
good looking games, it's just beautiful. So I stand by my first impression that this display is where the headset shines. It also got a special low blue light certification, which I don't really notice, but it sounds safer. Refresh rate options are only 72 and 90 hertz. I've mostly been playing on 90 hertz and that's smooth and plays well on the apps I've tried. I really don't have many complaints about the display, maybe only that I'm sad it still doesn't use mini LEDs or OLED, so the black levels are not that improved yet, but I'm sure that will come eventually. The display also gets a bit warm after a while and the headset makes some fan noise, but it wasn't terrible. So it looks great, but how does it sound? The microphone sounds like this. This. this is me testing the Pico 4 microphone. It is unfiltered and unedited, so this is exactly what it sounds like. Leave this video a like if you haven't yet as the support is a lot. So sometimes sounds pretty good, but some noise filtering messes up the voice, so I hope they can adjust that. The speakers sound pretty good, I mean not much bass, but it's not bad and you can turn it up loud with the volume buttons on the strap. If you're an audiophile, you'll probably just use your own headphones, but unfortunately it, there is no audio jack on the headset, only one USB-C slot for USB-C headphones, but you also use that slot for charging. This is a shame because if you use USB-C headphones, you cannot charge the headset simultaneously and it runs out of juice quickly in about two hours. It supports fast charging, so that does help and you can also use Bluetooth for the sound, so I personally don't think it's that bad. Bluetooth does have some delay though, not as noticeable when watching movies or playing adventure games, but if you play rhythm games, you unfortunately notice it. Now before we talk about the mess and what I don't like, let's talk about what I do like. Pico innovated with its controllers. They're the first to use an arc column like tracking ring with a new placement. The face buttons are what we're used to, a joystick with buttons. But an extra button on the right controller allows you to screenshot, which is actually pretty sweet. I love this slider toggle thing that pushes up the battery cover so you can easily switch batteries. It still uses optical tracking, but with the new tracking rings, Pico promises better controller tracking and the ability to move your hands closer together. And it's true, controller tracking is pretty good using the cameras and sensors on the headset. I can indeed put my hands closer together, I have no occlusion issues, not while scoping down my friends and not while reloading guns or holding guns to hand. I did find some blind spots, it will lose tracking when you put the controller right next to the headset and right below the headset like this. This doesn't matter for most use cases, but it's not as fun playing archery on this headset as with flawless base station tracking. But that is an unfair comparison, as the base stations cost about as much as the headset. Overall, the tracking is really good for anything else. Pico did a great job improving this over previous headsets, and I imagine it will only get better. Head tracking was perfectly fine though, no problems there. Now, you might have noticed an extra camera though on the headset that other other headsets don't have. At the center, a 16 megapixels RGB camera is used to make the pass-through colorful. Like with Quest, you can activate pass-through mode with a button or turn on a shortcut to double tap the headset sights. This combines all the cameras to show you your real-life room cat, kiwi, or whatever you like. And I was pretty excited about this new feature, but I think I expected a bit too much. The footage still looks noisy, and while it can make up some of the text on my monitor or paper, it gets distorted, warped, so reading for a long time is uncomfortable. It looks stereo though, so the left and right eye are seeing a different image, which is helpful to see depth. But the footage isn't one-on-one -on -one with real life, so the things you see in the past true are a bit larger which you need to get used to. Don't get me wrong, it is really cool to have this, it is heaps better than the Quest 2's black and white low quality pass through and I'm happy we got this improvement. I can tell some software magic is happening to make it more realistic and it's enough, but this will likely not be used for anything game changing yet, maybe only to see where you are or to spy on your girlfriend. Training Pokemon in my house will also have to wait, but I found it nice to do some quick things on my PC or phone without taking off my headset which was pretty cool. 
But now, games. Is there enough to play? I think so. Pico has been investing a lot of money in getting Quest games on the Pico store. Titles you may know like Blade and Sorcery, Les Mills, After the Fall, The Walking Dead, and they are working with many developers to add more. The good news is it all plays the same and even looks better on this headset. I watched an 8K 360 video demo on this headset too, and my goodness, it looked amazing. The bad news is that Meta is playing a clever game. They have been buying up VR developers, so they have a couple of exclusives you won't be able to play on Pico 4, like Resident Evil 4, Beat Saber, and the upcoming Iron Man VR game. To get people in, Pico needs to step it up and find partnerships like that for their platform. They have set their first step with Just Dance, which is their first exclusive coming out next year. And if you have a gaming PC, you can play Steam VR games through streaming or with a cable. You can use Pico software, which works, but I get better quality and stability with the virtual desktop. Yes, that app is now also available on Pico, and with it, I don't think you'll need the cable anymore. It's fantastic. So good news for PC gamers, as you have access to many more games like Half-Life Alex and the PC version of Beat Saber. But now this is where it got messy. During the Pico launch event, they showed us how ready they are to compete with Quest 2 by offering all the same software features and more. Which is great and I believe they can do it, but it wasn't ready and they didn't clearly mention that. Pico for some reason has been working with multiple marketing agencies and they have been sending out review units with different embargo times and a review guide that doesn't say that things aren't available yet. This has caused major confusion in the VR community and headset reviews that said that the headset is bad. This was just so unnecessary and I really hope Pico improves this next time. I think most of those reviews said that the software was lagging, so I waited until the latest software version was out, which is Pico OS 5 that everyone gets at launch and it's a ton better than version 4. The menu looks better and it's much like Quest with multitasking, avatar streaming and recording options and hand tracking. Hand tracking is in beta right now and is set to release by the end of the year. It works, but it's still finicky and reminds me when hand tracking just released on Quest 2, which got better over time, so we'll have to wait and see what it's like when this fully releases on Pico 4. What I really like is how open the system is. If you want to sideload APKs, for example, it's so easy. You don't need developer mode, a credit card, or sign up for anything. You just plug in the headset into your PC, copy your APK in there, and in VR, you can install it from the file manager. Here, you can also access almost everything on the headset. There are no blocks or restrictions. Nice. However, the system is bare bones if you compare it with Quest. But I think we got to give Pico some time to work work out the software as it took Meta two years or so before it got all of these features. Things already announced coming later are mixed reality features, remote assistance, a friend system, and a new social VR app. There are also accessories coming, like a PC VR dongle for better stability while streaming Steam VR, and a fitness band that can track your arms or legs. All features I'm really excited for. That doesn't take away that I don't know if Pico can deliver. We need proof of that, so consider this if you buy this headset. But I do think it has all you need to play games, which is most important. So yes, if it was just the hardware, I would recommend the Pico 4 in a heartbeat. As you can tell, there is much to like about this headset. The price is hard to beat for the value you get from it. The biggest thing it lacks right now is software and content, but that's also Pico's primary focus to improve in the upcoming months. We'll have to wait and see, but I can imagine them catching up with Quest. So if you don't don't mind taking that risk, the Pico 4 is a great option. This headset is truly set to compete with Quest 2 and I cannot wait to see what this will bring to the industry. So is this a headset you would buy and if so, what made you pick it over the Quest 2? Let us know in the comments below and thank you for watching. A special thanks to our champs and uh, you can also become a champ to support us by becoming a patron. I love y'all as always, see ya in the matrix.